Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'll call the audit and control March 21st meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, the committee does have a few uh, individuals missing, uh, but we do have a quorum. Uh, the chairman has uh, sat in to constitute a quorum. So thank you. Ex officio. Yes. Uh, if everyone's had an opportunity to uh, read the minutes from the previous meeting, I'd entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes. And a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, Carry. Thank you. Uh, item C is privilege of the floor. Is there anyone here to speak to the privilege of the floor? Uh, and if there is, I'd uh, welcome to come down front. Yeah, Susan. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susan Parker, and I know I have three minutes. I want. I have. I sent an email out to the audit and control committee after we had a discussion in administrative services about the new. Uh, property tax exemption level for seniors 65 and over. We had a discussion about the uh, resolution proposed for $30,000 as the upper uh, level um, for the exemption. After last month, there was <coughs> a unanimous uh, vote for 58,400, which of course could not be maintained and has to be changed. So uh, the reason I'm here is I uh, would like to add to your discussion um, at an um, request or suggest that uh, you have a discussion of whether or not this can be raised to 35,000 at the, the minimum. Uh, I, I worked with uh, a senior who was uh, 65, a couple I've worked with, and he worked at one of the plants in the North County um, for many years, the plant closed. The retirement was pretty minimal. He had to retire in his late 50s after years of work with uh, a medical injury. So as a result, he has a number of medical problems, as a lot of our seniors who have worked, particularly um, manual uh, jobs. He has uh, have a lot of injuries in their 60s and later, as many of us do. But um, they make $35,000, or they did when I worked with them. And I think that that level allows the 58400 actually um, the town assessors went to the trouble of uh, figuring out how much that would cost the county. And, um, and it was determined to be too high. But because we actually are um, working to be helpful, I think, to our seniors, we have a housing uh, problem. We have a long-term care problem. Long-term care is extremely expensive. We want to keep our seniors 65 and over in their homes as long. They want to stay in their homes. That's, uh, I was just reading that, you know, no matter, you have your 90-year-old people in in a nursing home and they want to go home. So the value of having your home is so important. And I would like to extend, uh, you know, suggest that the legislature extends the, um, or increases the proposed amount at least to $35,000 for the reason of, uh, you know, the uh, inflation, the increased cost of many things that have resulted, the, um, and just this the situation for many seniors who are struggling, even though they're making 35000 as a household, because the amount for the exemption is for, is for the household. It's not for an individual. And um, so anyway, that's my thought for the day. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thought. It's a thought. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming in today and, and um, uh, your 
um, at the end. Vision question. on this uh, this uh, topic. Sure. Uh, questions for Sue? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I I agree. I think fifty eight thousand four hundred is 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 too high. Okay, but uh, uh, has this has been amended? Uh, to so if if you want to if you have a lot of questions or discussion on it, Terry, let's hold it until that time. Oh, well, till the well, actual thing. Well, if you but, have a specific question for Susan, ask it. Uh, it is just a privilege of the floor, also. So sometimes we don't have the you know, discussion or talk back. Well, this okay, but, time. okay, but she's here. I get it. Okay. If she, if we can, if you want, we can call her back up in that discussion. I well, um, it's not too many or too long a winded question. Well. <clears throat> Dan, the only problem is this is the last item on the agenda. I don't want you to have to wait here, Sue, for two and a half, three hours to, to ask a question. Well, either uh, way is fine. I can stay well, or I, I can. I, it, no, I mean, that's, I mean, two and a half, three well, hours, I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm sure you have other things to do. You know, get, if, if you have a specific question, ask for the specific question. Okay. I mean, All we'll right. have the discussion later, you know. But, I mean, well, and, and I, I, yeah, and I intend to participate in the discussion later, sure. but, uh, okay, I, I guess uh, Sue's specific question is, uh, okay, um, apparently this has been changed to 30,000 in administrative services? Uh, as it stands, Terry, so this will not do, it's a discussion item. <laughs> So in order for it to be amended, it will need to be um, brought up during the full legislature meeting. Okay. Uh, and that current proposed amendment is for making it from 58,000 to 30,000. And that was I see uh, that. made by the original uh, sponsor of the resolution. And that was... Um, Considered and made and uh, discussed, and that thirty thousand was what was selected for different various reasons and different various information that was put into it. Um, discussion with the the you know proper departments and the assessors, uh, but also uh, su suggested that it be looked at in a couple of years after the thirty thousand was implemented to see the true ramifications and the implications that it would have. Okay, but Dan, it was uh, discussed in administrative services uh, in the last it, week, I guess. It was. Or Monday. earlier, earlier yeah, was, this week. We discussed Monday, it Monday or whatever. <clears throat> okay, I guess my question to Sue then, Sue, why 35000 as opposed to 30000 Well, uh, um, I think that 35000 is more inclusive and also includes uh, more inclusive and is appropriate for a lot of uh, couples and individuals who are 65 and older um, due to their uh, limited or kind of increasing limited ability to maintain their. Um, no, I, okay, I understand. I think that's a, I think that's an admirable uh, reason for increasing it. But I guess, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I mean, I've been in the legislature for a while. Um, we have raised this. Uh, I think I think from fifteen or sixteen thousand when I first got into twenty two thousand, and now uh, I guess the suggestion is from twenty two thousand to thirty thousand. You're proposing a little bit higher than that. No, no actually, the, the, so Terry, it stands. It stands. It's fifty eight thousand. Last month, fifty eight four. Yeah, yeah. last okay. month we made the the amendment, but what we didn't realize is it was actually above what was allowed by the state. And so this is also just keep in mind a recommendation. So towns, all individual townships have their choice of whether they're going to follow and, and, and allow for this to be um, they, utilized in they, their own individual townships and school districts. They, um, they, do, they do, Dan, but uh, what, we, what the county does, I think, will uh, impact a lot of the towns, villages in the two cities. Um, and what we do will probably, to a certain extent, put pressure on them. So I, I, I'm just concerned about raising it too high. Uh, so so 35000 are you basing that on what? Have you spoken to people in the Office for the Aging or the Tax Department? What effect is that going to, going to have? 
raising it from say thirty thousand to thirty five thousand, uh, what what effect will that have on the the, the county tax revenues? So, <laughs> Kitty's shaking her head. Well, I mean, we Do you think that okay. would be? Okay. Well, Jerry, we, I, we, I, we can do that then. No, if you I want. don't. So let's move. Let's let's do our normal proceedings. This is still just a privilege of the floor, and I think we're okay. getting a little over what it's intended to do. Absolutely. We have a discussion item. It's later on the agenda. If you would like to take part at that time, I'll allow some second privilege of the floor, and you can come back up. But I think we need to just continue on, let the meeting flow as it is. Save your questions for when we have the discussion. Okay. Item, Terry. okay. No problem. Because I can see that this, the discussion is going to just continue. It's going to continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're um, not there and yet. I do want you to know I sent you like a full email yes. on Monday with a lot of information. Thank so, you. So not to be, You're past I don't your three want to minutes. be surprised to surprise, surprising anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Any other privilege of the floor? Uh, not seeing any, we'll move into our proposed resolutions. Uh, our first proposed resolution today is the acceptance of CART's public transportation section 5311 uh, capital grant. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm Michelle Westfall, Senior Project Coordinator at CART's. Um, I'm here because we were awarded part of our 5311 capital grant um, for the mobility management program. And I just, um, we need to have a resolution to accept the mobility management portion um, for $173,623. Um, for the grant for our mobility manager. Uh, thank you, is this uh, uh, around the same funds that we get every year or is it adjusted uh, each year um, this based is on actually, anything? They actually gave us more money this mm -hmm. time if we have any projects or anything that we wanted to do. Um, and those are awarded by your submissions that you put forth of the need? Yes, we put in um, what it's going to cost to have the mobility management program mm -hmm. and then this time they gave us an extra I have it here. Let me just find it. I think it was. Um, an extra $57,000. If we had any projects, they had extra money. So they awarded everybody extra for the mobility management program. That's great. Mm -hmm. We can use it for um, payroll, her, her, pay or if we have a project or if we come up with a project to to do was this unanticipated extra i'm sorry was it unanticipated yes it was on it yes that's good i know during budget season we raised the um, um amount of money that we would be receiving in for people utilizing and income for the department and uh you know hopefully we meet those goals this if we is, don't, this will maybe well, help. Well, this is for the, she's on a grant, mm -hmm. so she's um, not on pay, our payroll. Okay. So it's just a grant. We receive 80% federal funding for her, 10% state, and then it's a 10% local share for her position. Mm -hmm. And we cover that in, um, in kind because we house her at CARTS and then my time for her <coughs> supervising her. Oh, good. Questions? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next proposed resolution is authorize the agreement with New York State DOT for performance and federal aid project pin number 5764.01. Good morning, Drew Rogers, Deputy Director of Public Facilities Engineering. Good morning. 
Uh, every year, DPF uh, contracts bridge painting through the New York State DOT federal aid program. The federal aid program provides 80% federal funds, 15% state Marchicelli funds with a 5% local. This year, DPF will contract two bridges for painting with the expected total cost of 400,000. So of the 400,000, 320,000 would be federal funds, 60,000 would be the state Marchicelli funds, and 20,000 would be the local funding. So this resolution would provide commitment to the funding and authorize the execution of the agreements to move the project forward. Let's just say the project costs 600,000. Where's the extra funds come from? We, uh, so we had three bridges <laughs> that we okay. were hoping to paint, so we had to go to two because okay. of the funding being kind of capped at where it was. Okay. That was my other question is how are we doing with our bridges? How many need painted and are we doing okay with our regular um, upkeep? Obviously not. We're yeah. leaving one well, behind. Well, as I said, we do this on an annual basis. So um, that we get, we kind of highlight what needs to be done. And we hope to do, say we hope to do three this year, but it's not such a critical condition that we can't do it in next year's program. So this year we had to put one off. Hopefully next year we don't. So. Do you believe that this cap will increase at all? over the years or is it going to be you said it was capped this it, year you know i'm sure yeah. that's a discussion item that some more funding would be helpful to help pay for some of these projects yeah we'll look up to our bridge engineer for just a second do you know yeah it's it's they the state's typically been increasing the, the amount they give us uh every year for the last 10 years for paying so yeah Ten years ago, we probably got two hundred thousand to try to paint four bridges. Now, now two hundred thousand paints, hopefully two, if not just one. So, but they keep increasing it. Luckily, the, the state provides the Marchicelli funding, so the local cost is still only five percent. So, it's a very good deal for us to get a five cents on the dollar to get our bridges painted. Yeah, well, I, but the point is too, though, is it used to be four. Then it was two or three, and yeah. that, you know. So, so eventually, the bridges are going to start to suffer unless we don't start pre-thinking. You know, I don't want to have someone be in my position in fifteen years from now and say, "What were they doing then? They weren't watching that." <laughs> and now we need to replace the bridges instead of just repainting. So that that's all. I just yeah. question that, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can try to plan for that. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next proposed resolution is authorized extension in, of the agreement between the Portland Pomfret Dunkirk Sewer District and the Village of Fredonia for sewage treatment services. Uh, Matt Olbeck, director of the Portland Pomfret Dunkirk Sewer District. <coughs> This resolution is to extend the contract, the current contract with Fredonia for up to or up through to the end of the year. Um, we the contract ran out December 31st, and we were in negotiations since somewhere around October. Uh, haven't been real successful. Uh, they're administrative board that has changed quite a lot the mayor changed so come january we kind of started all over again with a new committee um this is just to keep the current contract going so we can pay them this quarter uh, and if we can we're going to continue negotiations and hopefully get a little closer um, currently we pay them three dollars and eight cents a thousand gallons treated um the last figure they were at was 
seven dollars and fourteen cents a thousand. So it's a pretty good increase for pretty significant significant increase. It certainly is, yeah. We're just trying to get that number a little closer. Uh, questions, comments? Well, we thank you for your work in the negotiation <coughs> process. It's difficult to uh, uh, try to get that uh, ironed out, but I'm sure some diligence will prove prove to work. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The next resolution is amend resolution 262-19 confirming user charges Portland Pomfret Dunkirk Sewer District. Uh, the sewer board believes it's time for an increase. Um, there's aging infrastructure over there, some of which will be taken care of with the uh, grant. Um, with the infrastructure, but there's still some buildings and some old generators. So they're proposing increasing the fee, uh, the base fee, $42 per quarter per user. In the district, it's there's three different separate areas. Um, some of the district pays 110 or $100 per quarter. For the base fee, the rest of them pay $110 per quarter due to their the infrastructures from the 1930s in those two <coughs> areas and takes a little more maintenance. So they did some figures and they talked about the increase of $42 per quarter. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to point out that the, sure. uh, the sewer district board held a public hearing and the concerns previously was regarding the calculation of the user fee and what was under consideration was a flat fee as opposed to what they have been doing with a water usage based fee and the public at the hearing was very much opposed to a flat fee and when the board came back and proposed this rate structure with based on water usage, the public reaction that I observed was very, very positive, very favorable. Were some of those uh, individuals that were concerned about the flat fee, um, people with, with uh, you know, they weren't permanent housing or were they were kind of temporary housing or? They were seasonal housing. Yes. Definitely, yes. Which under, I, I, you know, understood that's where the usage would, would could make more sense for them yes. and others. Yes. Uh, so, very, uh, yeah. One of my questions was was going to obviously be the. Uh, I'm I'm sure that the the boards have done their their due diligence in reaching out to the public and uh, making sure that this is the best route forward for users in the department and agency. So. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Dan, in addition to the hearing, um, there is a Van Buren Bay or Van Buren Bay Point Association. Have you talked to the officers or f uh, folks from the association? Uh, the public hearing, the first public hearing on the flat rate, um, we received up to 100 letters opposing to that. The second public hearing, everybody, you know, there was a lot less people came. It was held at, I believe, a time when they were able to come, you know, during the summer. And but only a handful of letters on the second public hearing. And actually, some of the letters supported it. OK, but that's a hearing. Have you had discussions with the, the officers of the association? No. OK. I'm just thinking that might have been a good idea to reach out to them. I've had discussions with them on other things, but they've never yeah. mentioned that yet. Okay.
Any other questions or comments? Uh, not hearing any. Any? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carried. Thank you. Next proposed resolution is uh, amend 2024 budget to implement the uh, PPDSD1 and one project using funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. So the INI project inflow and infiltration. Um, the when the application was filled out for a grant, the total amount of the and I should say estimated total amount of the project is one million six hundred and twelve thousand dollars. When it was the figure was put in for the grant funding, it was put in a little bit lower than that. Um, again, the public hearing letter sent out said the project would not go through unless we received 25% grant funding. 25% of $1,612,000. We did receive 25% grant funding, but the figure was just slightly less. It was 1,500,000 and something. Leaving a gap of $3,750 to meet the 25%. Um, with that, Peter went to the ARPA committee and asked for $3,750. Seems like a pretty straightforward ask for getting the project to come to uh, fruition. A lot of extra strings attached. So, and with any luck, we're, we're currently still looking for more grant money. So, fingers crossed. Yes, the, the county's been notified that we are eligible for an additional funding uh, to the grant funds that we did receive. Not to say they were guaranteed to get them, but um, we're also hopeful that that could come through. And uh, the board is also reaching out to for a congressionally directed appropriation. Lots of work going on with this sort of thing. It's a lot of work preparing and establishing and getting a project uh, planned and paid for before a shovel even hits the ground right in time long time to, to do all that also uh, any other questions comments all those in favor please say aye aye opposed carried thank you thank you next uh, proposed resolution is uh, reallocating salary grade for bridge construction supervisor and carpenter. Good morning again. Drew Rogers, Deputy Director of Public Facilities Engineering. Lex Bromagen, Engineer 3, Department of Public Facilities. After all those hard questions, you just had them come down with you this time. Yeah, yeah, I learned my lesson. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> okay. So really the, the next three resolutions kind of all go together. Um, and just to give you a little a little background on you know why we're asking for these. Um, the DPF operates with two bridge crews. We have one crew that comes out of our Faulkner shop and one crew that comes out of our uh, Sheridan shop in the summer. And the bridge crews perform bridge reconstruction projects, rehabilitation projects, repairs. Um, they work with LEX to respond to, to uh, deficiency flags that New York State DOT may bring to us based on their bridge inspection program. And the current crew makeup is it's four employees. Um, there's a road construction supervisor too, uh, basically the, the bridge foreman, two carpenters and a, a skilled road maintainer position. And the, um, 
like I said, they work pretty closely with Lex and, and with the, the surveyors in our department. Um, but they've got a lot of responsibility to plan and execute these projects. Um, and so the issues that we've been having the last few years is, is retaining employees on those crews. Um, there, we have employees that will leave for promotional opportunities. Um, there's also another issue where an employee, say, starts in, comes at the kind of the bottom of the rung, if you will, at the skilled road maintainer position. There's no path forward for that individual to stay on the bridge crew all the way up through to the supervisor. So one would have to leave the bridge crew in order to one day come back and be the supervisor of the bridge crew. So we've, we've had issues with that where we're losing knowledge on, on the these projects and kind of create some safety concerns with having a, a rotating a rotating staff on that. So our proposed solution here would be to adjust some of the wage ranges on existing titles and add two titles to provide a structure within the bridge crew that allows for promotional opportunities all the way through the bridge crew and, and promote retention within the bridge crew and ideally enhance that safety on those projects by having crews that have been together and stay together. Uh, so our proposed crew makeup then would still be four positions per crew. Um, we have the bridge construction supervisor. It's an existing title. It's not currently in use. It, it uh, 2007, I believe was the last time that was employed it had gotten replaced with a road construction supervisor title. Um, so that with that being an existing title and not in use for a while, it had a lower grade on it. So we're proposing to adjust that grade from a 14 to a 17. And then uh, we'd like to create a senior carpenter position. This would help with the supervision, um, would be the person in charge if the bridge construction supervisor happened to not be there, was off, um, whatever that the case may be. And then obviously this is the, the senior position that would you know, still do the carpenter work. Um, the proposed grade for this would be a grade 14. Uh, and then have still retained the carpenter title, um, but uh, we're proposing to adjust that grade again to give that hopefully to give that incentive to, to stay within the bridge crew. And then the final position on the crew, uh, we're looking to add another title, the carpenter trainee title. Um, this would be the grade eight, which is the same as the current skilled road maintainer position, but being that it's a trainee position after two years within that successfully completing that period, then they move up to a carpenter. So again, it gives that, that employee the incentive to say, stay with the crew, knowing that there's a, a promotional opportunity coming up to go from an eight to a 12. Um, so that's that's the plan that we have and, and kind of the, the background and, and the hope of what we're looking to achieve with that. Do you have a rough, cost analysis of what that cost we, we did we did yeah. um we had chad run it in our accounting department and uh <coughs> basically we we did it analyzed it one year mm -hmm. as it is now versus one year with these proposed changes yep and our wage and fringe showed went from about eight hundred seventy two thousand for both crews to nine hundred three thousand for both crews so it was about a $30,000 increase for, for for one year for a full year for a year yeah okay yeah okay uh, questions uh, <clears throat> yeah Dan just one um, guys uh, from the resolutions um, it looks like you have worked with human resources on, on these uh, changes um, how do these these uh, increases compare to other counties? Do you know offhand? Well, 
I, I work pretty close with Cattaraugus County. Okay. And, and they're having similar issues. And in fact, they they're kind they, they've gone to the point where their their bridge program costs them a lot more money because they're not able to do things in house. They've lost that expertise. I'm sorry, Rex is it? Rex, Lex, Lex. I'm sorry, Lex. Um, Lex, are they um, are they contemplating increases in their salaries and grades for their bridge people? We're, we're very fortunate in Chautauqua County to have the support and the equipment and and the ability to do a lot of work ourselves. A lot, uh, many counties. I understand that, but these other counties are they contemplating? increases in grades or salaries to to their bridge people i can't speak on that because okay. they don't have the type of bridge maintenance crews we do well they'd be similar correct no no, no. They, these our guys actually will build a bridge replace a bridge we own our own crane we have concrete forms oh, okay we do the all job right. Yeah. all right all many of my colleagues throughout the state at my position and other counties everything's contracted oh Okay. You know, we're fairly right. unique in that respect that we All do right. a lot of, a lot more in-house work. All right. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. The, the real comparison question you should be asking them is how much our bridge um, crews and the equipment cost in the amount of bridges we do compared to other counties that utilize as a different right. agency to do that or you know contract right. that work out and what that comparison would be right? and what are we actually saving if anything you, you know i mean i don't know those numbers yeah i'm assuming we, we have are. done that a few times in the past i've been sure. doing this i've been with the county since 93 and uh it's i know what the you know what the costs come in and when we bid stuff out. And that's why on our bigger bridge projects, we utilize the federal funds mm -hmm. to offset. But the smaller bridges, we're, we're so competitive doing it ourselves that it's they're really not even worth well, the comparing. There, there's also the convenience. You can you have it in-house. You don't have to worry about contracting it out with a private contractor. Right. Correct. I'm, I'm okay with all three of these. We're very fortunate to have the bridge crew that we do, and I think that uh, this is an essential service that is so vital to the traveling public that this is something that we should support. Just being on the legislature for the uh, while, you know, I see a trend that the county is trying to. Um, we're, we are continually adjusting grades. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, something that will continue as the years go on. Uh, we're trying to, to retain, which is great. And uh, we want to be able to, uh, you know, maintain the, the current level of service that we have. Uh, just as I stated, too, we, we want a good experience crew because they're more efficient and can be work safely as well. So, um, you know, if we don't, keep that in mind too when we keep having new people on there we will see that thirty thousand dollar increase in somewhere else um for just sure. you know this you know accidents uh you know bridge taking an extra two months to do because of in in you know inefficiencies uh so you know the value is will be put back into the program if you will so I'm in favor also. Oh. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Terry unofficially had said he was in favor with it. I can say that he was an aye. We can revote if we need to when he comes back. Uh, thank you. Next resolution. Thank you. Um, so setting us, let's see, setting salary for carpenter training. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think that's was that's the last discussed in the discussion of the first resolution. <clears throat> Correct. So I think that we covered the next three resolutions, right? We seven and eight. So what I'll do when Terry comes back, I'll vote on all three. Okay. Here he is. Terry, we need you for a vote. So, Terry, on the last of the reallocating salary grade for bridge construction supervisor and carpenter. Uh, all those in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And the next one is setting salary for carpenter trainees. Aye. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 
opposed, carried. And then also number eight is setting salary for senior carpenter. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed and carried. Uh, the next resolution is number nine, is the cancellation of taxes on donation to land bank. Good morning, Todd Thomas from the Chautauqua County Law Department. We are also counsel to the Chautauqua County Land Bank Corporation. Um, 501 South Roberts Road in the city of Dunkirk was purchased at the tax auction, I believe in 2022. Um, it should not have been sold because of the poor condition of the property. It's structurally unsound. Someone did buy it. They've tried to put money into it and fix it. Um, an engineer has now told them it's not savable. They would like to donate it to the land bank. At issue is because of the time they've owned it, a year's taxes have accrued. Um, she apparently is now saying she cannot pay the taxes in order to clear it for the donation. So she's asked, the land bank has asked that the Legislature forgive that year's taxes. It comes to about $6,122 in order to free it up for donation and to the land. 54 cents. And 54 cents. Thank you, Mr. Nebel. Uh, 6122.54 is the 2023 arrears. Um, it needs to be demolished. The land bank plans to bring it down as soon as they can get title to it. That's the taxes for one year? Yes, it has an assessed value of 94.9 even though it is structurally unsound. Um, I don't know why it's so. Uh, Todd, I, I, am, I, I do know the property. Um, it, it's assessed at 94,900. Actually, the full market value is 130,000, um, but really it's in, it's in deplorable okay. condition. Thank you for sharing your experience with it because I've not seen it. So it's 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 a it's not a castle by any means. <laughs> what would be the value after the place was demolished? The value of the land is I don't know the facility. Couple thousand. It's at seventy four hundred. Seventy four hundred valuation of the land. It's on South Roberts Road in the residential part, so it is a buildable lot. It would be able to be resold for construction, mm -hmm. which is usually what the land bank would do when they have a buildable lot. If it's too small a lot to build, they'll try to market it to the neighbors, but this one should be buildable. Do you, in your experience, how often has the legislature had been requested or, or asked to do something like this? I have a notoriously bad memory. So I this is the first time I believe I've come in on a single parcel. There have been instances of the past with the Brownfield properties where we've asked that the, we've come in as a law department for real property and said that um, this thing's just accruing taxes we're guaranteeing so we should um, put a stop to that. But this is the first time I can recall doing this on a specific property for the land bank. It just, you know, the, pre the, the precedence is so oh, I, I understand. That, you know, you uh, do this for one person and then someone else doesn't do their homework or research and buys a property at an auction and they're in the same position. And then it could happen again. Now, I understand if we don't do this, we'll have the same resolution in front of us in another year or two when it comes time for this sale, the tax auction. The yes, it will right? be in our... So, so we're yes. speeding up the process. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately that, it, that may create a precedent, but um, or it may create something that's quite often a large part of my job is distinguishing precedents and saying mm -hmm. why it doesn't apply. So the, so the facts of this one may be unique enough to justify it. And I applaud the person for trying to pr buy the property and improve it and make it better. Um, so I don't want to discourage that Certainly. also. So well, it's a, I, I just have that debate. Well, then also I, the, the land bank is going to take it over. They're, right. they're probably going to demolish the, the building. Yes. And they'll have a, a viable building site in Understood. the future. So 
I just did a little, and I agree with yeah, that. the uh, process uh, getting there is the uh, challenge, right? Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah, but, but, you know, but in the long run, I, I mean, you know, we have these properties all over and, um, you know, unfortunately we, you know, we, we, it, it, you know, it, it'll be better moving forward and it's a good thing for what we're doing, but also. Yeah. It, it's I, I do share your concern, Mr. Pavlock, that, yeah. um, we could get requests in the future. I do think this one is pretty unique with the situation that happened. That was the land bank had intended to pull it from the demo or for demo from the property auction. Um, there was an it, error that didn't happen and it didn't happen. It went to sale. Um, I, it, part of what it drives it is the owner that bought it also sank a lot of money into it, trying to fix it and sure. depleted her funds. Um, we might not ordinarily entertain the request. Understood. And I do, I applaud the, the individual trying to pr mm -hmm. promote a business, you know, promote the property and try to improve it. So uh, it, yes. it's, it's challenging. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Dan, just a comment. Okay, so we have the resolution in, in front of us, okay, to uh, cancel all charges on the following parcel. But uh, I, I I would like to see an amount in here. I, I think that should be there so that uh, uh, all, all the legislators will know how much the, the charges are that are being uh, f uh, f foregone. Are you comfortable yeah, I'm with not that sure amount why that you isn't. stated? Yes, um, it, it was. Even if we say approximately, sure. Todd, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, but I, I would like to see an amount in here before I, I vote to, to do this. I think the amount, you know, I, I agree with the amount. I'm okay with that. And also what happens is, well, we didn't realize that this was also tied to it or what. Yep. You know, there's always uh, something that always seems to. Instead of all charges, you could amend to to cancel property tax arrears for 2023 and the that, amount of. That, that approximate. Yes. Uh, okay. That approximate uh, 6,122.54. So, Terry, I did, if, if you would wish to make an amendment to the um, resolution, then please do so. Yeah, Dan, I think. Uh, in Todd, we would just state it for him. If you want to state it for him, we would just it. add that to that last resolve. Yeah, the, the okay. last resolve, and, and please feel free to correct um, that the tax enforcement officer is authorized to cancel property tax arrears of 2023 that approximate 6,122.54. Thank you. Uh, Terry, on the following yeah. parcel, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I've, 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 uh, right. Uh, 501 South Roberts Road. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I second. Second. Motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Carry. Uh, discussion on the amended resolution. Uh, if not, all those in favor of the amended resolution, please say aye. Right. Aye. Opposed. Period. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, next resolution is to transfer American Rescue Plan Act spending plan budgets from 2023 to 2024. Good morning. Blake Eric, Director of Administrative Services. Um, this resolution is to transfer the remaining balance within the ARPA projects for that was 2023 budget and to reappropriate that within the 2024 budget. Uh, questions? No, no questions for Steve's son. <laughs> I, I think I'm all right with the questions. We've had a pretty good uh, dialogue mm -hmm. throughout the year, which is great. Uh, it uh, um, shows that we have had good dialogue throughout the year to not have a lot of questions today. So uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next proposed resolution is to uh, amend the 2024 budget for probation department uh, ATI pretrial award. Good morning, Gilbert Taylor, Director of Probation for Stockwell County. I am requesting to respectfully request to uh, the legislator approve our resolution, resolution to amend our budget because we received some ATI funding that will allow us to put some money back into our fund balance and allow us to put some additional money into our contractual to allow us to purchase some things that make some adjustments in our department. I wish you could come to every meeting and tell us that. Well, we had the money. We might as well put it back into our county's fund balance. Uh, questions? Comments? Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, great work in the, in the department. I know a lot of times, you know, you know that there's some potential for more grants or funding that, that can come up. And, uh, you know, great that you continue to receive those and, and uh, to utilize them and also um, you know give the money back uh, you don't have to you know so you can it's great well we've been very lucky this year with some of the funding we've got so we've been able to do some of the things that our department hasn't been able to do for the last 20 years and mm -hmm. so you know this has been really beneficial for us as a department and for our county good yeah, no, the, the department suffers. The work that you do is suffering. And, you know, inevitably the, the community suffers, right? So, um, Absolutely. yeah, that's really great. Other questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Have Thank you. you. Good day. Next proposed resolution is amend the 2023 budget for year end reconciliations, Department of Mental Hygiene and Social Services. Good morning. Good morning. Diana Songer, Deputy Director of fi um, Social, I'm sorry, Finance um, for Human Services. Sam's the photo Deputy Director of Finance. Um, we're here regarding a resolution to amend the 2023 budget for additional 23 expense accruals that were posted to the state system in February, which causes an increase in the appropriation accounts and an increase in the revenue accounts, resulting in an increase of fund balance. Didn't take long for Gilbert's give back. <laughs> Gone, no, did it? No, I, I felt bad sitting there. I'm like, he's giving and we're taking, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, primarily uh, the increase is because of most of this increase, or a good, good portion of it is safety net. Our reimbursement rate is significantly lower on safety net. The safety net numbers keep... Um, you know, well, as of now, through two months, we are trending below budget, but we're very early in 2024. So, okay. so right now, the safety net numbers have not continued to increase. And, and through two months, we're, we're not at the actual number that we go over budget at this time. So hopefully we're reaching like a plateau is what you're. That would be the hope, or at least, at least the numbers I've seen through two months. Sure. Hopefully we don't have a delay. <laughs> well, with everything with the state, unfortunately, it's kind of delayed. But that is kind of coming directly out of the state system. Yeah. So that, that's more accurately on time. Uh, questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Next proposed resolution is authorized lease agreement renewal with Warwick Plaza LLC for Chautauqua County Department of Mental Hygiene Mobile Crisis Team office space. In Patrick's uh, vacate vacancies, uh, we are having to fill uh, in. Huh? Yes, Todd Thomas from the law department. We are pinch hitting on a regular basis for various departments. Um, this is a request for approval to extend uh, to renew a lease 
really an extension, I believe, of existing space on the existing terms, the same rate, um, to continue housing the Mobile Crisis Center at Warwick Plaza. My questions or comments. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next proposed resolution is policy guidelines for administering proceeds of original 3% occupancy tax. Good morning, Nate Aldrich, Economic Development Coordinator, the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, Thomas Law Department. Uh, so it uh, came to our department's attention uh, last year that um, Resolution 94-13, uh, which establishes policy guidelines for the 3% occupancy tax program, uh, was out of date and uh, never rescinded after several changes to the state law and um, contradictions to what, how we're allocating those occupancy tax proceeds in practice. So uh, this resolution before you, uh, Todd and I work to really just uh, address that housekeeping issue and clarify uh, that that resolution 94-13 be rescinded. And in the resolve clauses, um, uh, really three things that reflect um, change to the state law last year whereas um, it's now required that 50% of the proceeds of the 3% program be allocated to CCVB. Uh, the remaining 50% um, allocated through the annual budget um, process. And the third um, really stipulation is um, really parameters for our department's administration of the competitive uh, grant program. Anything you wanna to add, Todd? Um, I would. As Nate said, it, the state law changed last year, 1202J, the tax law became much more precise as to where the money can be directed, which, as Nate said, that's why we have it. We did include, um, because I know it's come up before, the three-year limit on 3% funding is in our, uh, number three of this procedure with uh, some discretionary language about how the body can determine if it is or isn't the same project and have discretion to approve or deny going forward a little more clear than it was in the past. So, so this has only been a, a year out of rears and sense of, of, we haven't been doing it since 2013 or 15. It's, it's only a year, correct? So, uh, Todd and I did a bit of uh, legislative history research, and it appeared that um, Resolution 94-13 really became out of date back in 2014 when the state law changed then. Okay. We uh, found a transcript of the committee meeting from 14 where the resolution, it was discussed that it be rescinded or replaced, and uh, based on our research, that was never done. So this okay. cleans that up. So I, you know, my I always like old business. I wasn't around in fourteen. Otherwise, I might have remembered that one. But uh, um, you know, I just want to make sure moving forward, what sort of parameters are in place so that it doesn't occur, and how do we randomly, you know, monitor that? Where's that? Where's that responsibility fall? You know, part of the audit control committee's responsibility is to make sure that that monitoring mechanism is in place. Today, we're seeing one that it was missed, you know, so how do how we not miss one and, and say, you know? Sure, it was, um, there's kind of a two-part answer because law school, I have a two-part answer for everything. <laughs> the first one is that it was not a significant change in the past. It, it was definitely a change. It should have been dealt with, but um, it was more just a redirection of some authority. It wasn't the conditions that we saw last year, which dedicate funding and direct how the county has to spend it. So, but the, the actual answer to your question, Mr. Pavlock, um, every two years, 
the law department and the executive work on the renewal legislation that goes to the state. Um, so it would probably rest with the law department to advise the legislature each time this comes around to if an update would be needed. For instance, this past cycle, what we asked for was not necessarily what we received, mm -hmm. um, which is why we're doing this now. So the, as this would probably be, a, this may be a feature in the future where we will need to come back and say, the state legislature adjusted 1202 this way or that way, let's update our procedure. So it'll just be a, a running task in the future from law. And I under you know I I there's a lot of changes every day and I can imagine that that list is very long and for one to get missed is probably that's pretty good probably all right so I understand but it is our job to ask those questions so thank you for that and now hopefully we hopefully we don't miss them but uh, I understand if we do we're correcting it now so questions comments Mr. Chairman I'd, I'd like to compliment these two gentlemen for bringing this to this point, because as you can imagine, the researching the history going back 30 years and trying to find out what happened, why it happened, when it happened, was quite an undertaking. And um, my only general comment about your concern of, of uh, in the future, how we would catch things like this is that the, the initial resolution and some of the subsequent ones were very specific for policy resolutions. And whenever we have a policy resolution that is very specific, it is generally at risk of becoming out of date. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a concern that we ought to be focused on is policy resolutions that are specific should be something we should keep close track, track of. Define we. <laughs> we I as have a, a council in my pocket. So. <laughs> we, we as a legislature, we as a as a law department, as a county, as a county executive, I, all, 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 of us. all of them, all of the above. All of us. If we have to have a resolution come in <clears throat> front of us, it's a policy resolution. We should be asking the question: What does this replace? And is the what it's replacing being eliminated? Yeah. What are the implications? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> No nope. note taken and filed. I fell into that we. <laughs> okay. Uh, any qu other questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you for Thank your work you. on that. The next proposed resolution is authorized use of Chautauqua County 2% occupancy tax reserve funds for removal of damaged steel dock structures from Dunkirk Harbor. Did I skip one? I'll let you sit back down. I must have turned the page. Are you on the, are we doing the block grant? Yes. Uh, okay. So the next one is the amend the 2024 budget for New York State Community Development Block Grant Award Micro Enterprise mm -hmm. Assistance Program. Hi, Stephanie Nick, Special Projects Coordinator with the Planning and Development Department. Um, so this is just to adjust our 2024 budget to include the revenues and expenditures for the um, CDBG block grant. Um, we received the award after the budget had been completed, and there's no county funding that goes into this. It just um, needs to be included so that we can keep track of revenues and expenditures. Uh, questions, comments? Uh, not hearing any. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now uh, we'll go on to the next resolution, 16, which is to authorize the use of Chautauqua County 2% occupancy tax reserve funds for removal of damaged steel dock structures from Dunkirk Harbor.
morning, everyone. I'm Dave McCoy. I'm Chautauqua County Watershed Coordinator, and I work with in the County Department of Planning and Development. Uh -huh. uh, Randy Woodbury, good morning. Uh, DPW Director, City of Dunkirk. Good morning. I'm Mike Perbition. I'm a Deputy Director of Public Works with the City of Dunkirk. Uh -huh. I guess we can start. The uh, um, County Executive was kind enough to work with uh, uh, County Watershed Director McCoy prepare this resolution and to find the funds within to reinvest some of the money that their visitors uh, contribute to the hotels and things to uh, improve the waterways that they come to enjoy. Uh, also, the native people do that. The, the structures that were damaged uh, were more than 75 years old past their heyday and really been abandoned for a couple decades. And like as David mentioned in the resolution, the latest storms are really turned it into a war zone. Made a really hazardous conditions between the Yacht Club in Dunkirk, uh, north of Memorial Park, and between the, the city boat launch on the west side of the pier. Very hazardous. Uh, a lot of fisher people got stuck in there. Uh, children were perhaps climbing on them, so the danger was removed. Uh, Lake Erie Management Commission was unanimous in supporting this last year. And we thought the cost, uh, our development director was working with David to, to find a good contractor. And we thought it was going to take a day. It took a little bit longer than that. So uh, we're coming here to uh, hopefully get your support to, to match the Lake Erie Management Commission's unanimous support to pay this contractor. They did a good job. If you see the before and after pictures, it's, it's now safe. And it's important to attract visitors and, and keep it safe for uh, navigation. So thanks. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make some comments. Uh, first of all, this was an excellent project, uh, as Mr. Woodbury pointed out, and it was done very well. So the results are, are excellent. Um, and it was unfortunate that the city was caught a bit by surprise by the cost of this project much more than they anticipated. So I think that this is a, a very ap appropriate use of some of our occupancy tax to assist the city um, in having completed this excellent project. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, uh, Dan, just one. Um, guys from the city, um, did you have a contract with this uh, this uh, marine contractor, a written contract? We did not. You, you didn't have, okay, Randy, so you didn't have a written contract with the contractor? There was a, a lapse in understanding about probably, it, it's you, it probably fell into either too many cooks in the kitchen or not enough cooks in the kitchen. Okay. In, so it, it was a learning project, and as the legislator chairman pointed out, it was a good project. We apologize for coming here after the fact. Yeah, it, it, uh, I don't question the, the um, worth of the project. I, I too think it was a worthy project. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the reason for my question is uh, if you had a written contract, there'd be specifics that the contractor would be would have to do, okay, the requirements and stuff. Yeah. And that's something that, uh, well, I, I mean, I would like to see what, or maybe you can just vouch for him. He had specific duties, specific responsibilities, and those were all fulfilled? Yes, and this one is actually fairly easy to reverse engineer because you have a before picture that looks like a war zone okay. and was as hazardous as a war zone, and you have an after job picture. None of that's there anymore, so it, you're absolutely right. With a contract, if, we, if it was complicated, we'd have to have a lot more things on the thing. This was like, this is the hazard, pretty darn obvious. Now it's gone. So it, it, it kind of, it was a contract that kind of worked it worked its way. You know, we, we, we know that it was done. We know that it had to be done. We know that it was done. So it, it had the effect of a contract. Did it have a written contract? No. Will we, got, will we ever let that happen again? No. It, it was a verbal contract, and these things happen. Yep. But I, I think in the future, 
I, I, I'd prefer to have a written contract before I'm authorizing this kind of money to the, to the city. We agree with you 3,000%. Okay. okay. All right. I just had similar concerns, so I, you know, I, I assumed that they would probably come up. I really appreciate the project, and I do have, I don't have any questions in the, 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 the process, and really even the cost at the end of the day, because it, you know, I can understand the amount of work that it is to remove those hazards and at work. It just is the the planning of it and the process of it. And uh, so I think we've already hit that. I do want to be clear on the the numbers, if I could. Uh, so just a clarification. So the <clears throat> the county had originally already invested 12,000, is that correct? That's correct. Before the project was initiated, uh, City of Dunkirk, uh, as a member of the Lake Erie Management Commission, yeah. Uh, requested some financial assistance in the amount of 12000 and we provided that. And at the time, that was going to be how much of a percentage of the assumed cost? It was our understanding that was 100% of the cost. Okay. And so now we are contributing another 50 Okay, so that puts the total of 62 but the city is not asking for a hundred percent of the cost. You so you anticipate to uh, fund the remaining portions. Is we, that we will address that some way. It will be the city's responsibility to do that. Uh, we did find a proposal later from the contractor that said the maximum number of days was going to be five days. That was missing when it went to Lake Erie Management Commission when we thought it was going to be one day. But not, so if you multiply the five days times the 12, you get to 60, and then there's some mobilization. So we think that the pro contract that they proposed retroactively, but that has a, a date on it of October, is 62,000. If we can get them to agree with that, we're done. If we can't, the city's got to figure out what to do. So the st city's still hoping that the this full amount will cover. Okay. Yes, well, that, that's you, our hope. Well, you're hoping to reduce the 107500 Randy, from the contractor? Yes. Okay, because, it, it, and look, I agree. Um, it, I mean, they were partially, partially negligent as far as I'm concerned because they should have had a written contract with the city. The city should have had a written contract with them. Okay, regardless, um, I am not opposed to the to the county um, putting up fifty thousand because um, I think it was a worthwhile project. It has a benefit to the city of Dunkirk. It has a benefit to the businesses um, around the harbor there, um, which means additional sales tax to the to the county. So uh, I will support this. But in the future, I think it, we have to tighten things up a little bit there. Totally okay. agree. All right. I have other comments, but I've learned to keep them. <laughs> but, but, but we're under time constraint. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thank Randy. Favorite. Uh, next proposed resolution is authorized use of Chautauqua County 2% occupancy tax reserve funds for more 2% projects repairs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this project was, was submitted to the occupancy tax program. I, I'm thinking back in 2019, uh, the relatively small project up in, uh, in Forestville on Tupper Creek. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic happened. We forestalled that. We weren't able to fund it for a year or two, and then we wound up having the occupancy tax ARPA bolster to get us back up and running again and get our programs basically back to what they should have been. Uh, after the pandemic, um, this project was installed about two years ago, um, but part of it failed. And we'd like to go back in and, uh, and fix it. Um, you know, the Morses are 
elderly, um, 90s. Uh, they've been taxpayers for probably 70 years of their adult lives here in Chautauqua County and being a compassionate person. If there's somebody like that who needs some help, I'm more than willing to try. All right, questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, just a sure. comment that um, we've uh, done a lot of this type of work over the years, and the techniques that we're using today are much, much improved over what they were in the past. Uh, in the past, failures of this type were not at all uncommon, but this is a relatively uncommon failure because the techniques that we're using today are so much more improved. Um, but then uh, with with climate change, we're having a lot more storm events than we had in the past. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that we will see occasionally some failures like this. So it's unfortunate it happened, but I think under the circumstances, it's appropriate that we remedy the failure. Dave must be getting some information. It's all right. <laughs> Any other comments, questions? No, uh, Terry? No, I'm all set. Um, no, I think we're all set. Uh, comments uh, or, or all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next proposed resolution is the environment assessment of applications for 2024 2% in Lake Occupancy Tax Grant Funding Program. Unfortunately, the applications and the seeker documentation wasn't provided in your pre-file packets. So I'll print some hard copies for you. Really? You know, we have due to changes to the occupancy tax program brought in Albany uh, with a mandate to focus the program more squarely on improving recreation and tourism opportunities, but also to balance watershed spending with, with in-lake spending. And what we have done is created a new and parallel program to what I call the traditional watershed program to fund in-lake projects. Um, we have the money in the 2024 budget for these new in-lake projects. We have 250K budgeted. Uh, we formed a new review panel, a new application, solicited applications in January, received them, scored them, ranked them by the 15th of uh, last month and we've recommended six projects to go forward with those projects are town of westfield they want to install permanent docks in barcelona harbor city of dunkirk chadwick bay marina dredging and permitting um this is not the actual dredging work but it's doing the environmental and regulatory work to prepare for that project. Starry Stormwater Control by the town of Chautauqua. Uh, I think most of you heard about some of the issues we're having with that invasive. Bemis Point Blue Way Trail. This has an excellent opportunity to bring a lot of tourism and recreation dollars into the county. Finley Lake Aquatic Herbicide Application. Um, Finley struggled with weed and water quality problems for years. Um, we are hopeful that herbicides might be an answer for them. And then lastly, there's the CLA operational assistance. This is a uh, investment in uh, improving, further improving the CLA's operations on Chautauqua Lake. Mr. 
Chairman. As, as Dave pointed out, this is a new program. And as the money was included in the 2024 budget, we heavily uh, encouraged Dave to try and get this program implemented as quickly as possible so that we could have the opportunity for these organizations to put this money to work this year, this season, rather than struggle to get through the application process and so forth, and then not be run out of time this year to actually utilize the money this year. So Dave took the challenge on. He did uh, Yeoman's job of moving this forward at breakneck speed. And as a result, we find ourselves one day short of having the secret documents in front of us to review. But certainly to his credit, to get us to this point at this time, and I would like to point out uh, that I had the pleasure yesterday afternoon of reviewing all the secret documents in detail. And I find them all to be excellently done. Um, and there, I found no deficiencies or concerns with any of the secret documents that were presented. Thank you. Uh, Pierre, if you've read all this, I'm 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 okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to do so. You're welcome. Uh, you know, concurrently, we are running two grant programs for 2025, uh, much like we've done in the past, but only with one program, uh, both in Lake and Watershed. Those applications, that window to apply to those grant programs open January 1st, uh, they will close April 1. We will again convene two separate committees, review those, score them and rank them, and probably back to the legislature with a rank list June, July, thereabouts for inclusion in the 2025 budget, whatever that brings us. You know, I, I do applaud that your your work in the in this and to utilize the funds that have been put place in place. Uh, you know, when we created the those funds, uh, there was some debate of the in which the amount was to be set. Uh, so, you know. This is our research time to say uh, or to ask is, is, is you know, the, the funding that we've put in place is sufficient for this year and the projects that you're moving forward with. Um, a continuation in that amount is going to be uh, something that will be in question later on. You know, when it comes time for budget season, do we maintain this current amount? Do we, uh, is there more of a need? Do we increase that amount? So, you know, those are some questions that we will be faced. And I, uh, I'm anxious to see how these work, um, what the other needs are. Uh, if you had to uh, guess how much would some of those other projects that didn't make the queue cost? You know, the changes that were handed to us from Albany um, were challenging. And in order to deliver the projects that we are delivering in 2024, we took what would have normally been budgeted for our water, traditional watershed program and funded that from the reserve. So that was $250,715 total for 10 new projects. We used our anticipated budget level for occupancy tax projects, 250, and we set that aside for the in-lake program. So in 2024, will be a banner year. We'll be delivering about half a million dollars in tourism, and recreational focused projects. And, and honestly, looking back and looking forward, I think we're in a good spot with the occupancy tax program because our revenues from the tax have increased every year with the exception of 2019. And that tells me the two and the 3% pro programs are working well and they're working well together. And, you know, really that's just, a snapshot of the economic activity that's associated with tourism recreation 
sector in Chautauqua County. So that half a million or whatever is really just a small piece of the pie of the overall impact of, of what those dollars do. And most of them are out of town dollars. You know, there are people coming here to enjoy Chautauqua County and our lakes and waterways. And, and we've got the resources here that nobody else has, you know, I mean, Cattaraugus County, they don't have anything like we have here in terms of water resources. Allegheny County, no. Even Erie County. Erie County's got shoreline, but Buffalo is all around it. So we're really well positioned. And, you know, a significant portion of our real property tax base, uh, sales tax, uh, and even our occupancy tax spending is focused on our lakes and waterways. So we're in a good spot. We're doing some things that are relatively creative and new. Um, it looks good for the future. What will 2025 bring us? I don't know. You know, if we stick with our traditional funding level of 250, maybe we'll be doing 125 on the watershed side, 125 on the inlet. Um, we believe our budget for 2025 will increase by about $90,000. Do we apply all of that to these two programs? So then we might be, you know, 190 on each side of the equation. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out when it comes to the budget. Um, we could have another great year with the eclipse. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, some of the hotels are booking rooms at $1,000 a night. That is interesting. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And plus, you know, the Airbnbs and the VRBOs and, and those sorts of things have really been a boon to our occupancy tax program. And we've been getting better at collecting those revenues, stopping the leakage. And I think it's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why the, the program and the, the tax has continued, the revenues have continued to increase. So time will tell what 2025 brings us. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yeah. Uh, at this time, uh, we're made it through our proposed resolutions. Um, before we get into our discussion items, if we uh, can just take a brief uh, five, minutes. five minute recess, and then we'll reconvene and, and uh, uh, discuss. Uh, then we'll have our discussion on our tax exemption. Just a yes.
at this time we'll reconvene and uh, our first item under uh, discussion is to renew and amend the resolution 71-24 it's the amend the senior real property tax exemption uh, at this time i guess i would welcome legislator parker to come down too if she wishes uh, she has she's no, I think then she was going to wait till after these okay. spoke and she was going to come. I just want to make sure she has the opportunity to take part in the discussion if so she so chooses. So, um, Good morning, Kim Maline, Director of Real Property Tax. Kitty Crow, Director of Finance. So while Kitty's handing that out, I'll give you a little background. Um, last month we came to you guys with the exemption to increase the income to 58400 what I didn't know at that time was that that income is for a sliding scale. The county does not do a sliding scale, so we have to amend that amount anyway. The maximum amount for the exemption without a sliding scale is 50000 However, between some talks with some of the local assessors and some concerns, it has been brought to your guys' attention now for 30000 as the maximum income. We did do some research, um, like 30 some percent of Chautauqua County's residents 60 and older is 29.9. That's kind of where the 30,000 is coming from. Um, it does put it a little close. If somebody was to have an increase next year, they might have a chance of losing that exemption. It's hard to say. And, and I'm sorry, Kim, you said that's a median? It's median an average. In, median income? Mm -hmm. 60 and older in Chautauqua County. It's about 31% of the county residents who are 60 and older. Okay. 31% you said? Yes. Um, the total population for 60 and older is around 37,800 for income. So that we have decided to kind of ballpark to do the 30,000 and then revisit this every couple of years to make sure it's in line with everything. Second time today. Can you define we, please? This would be more on me. Okay. Thank you. No, Bringing and I, it to you, yes. Okay. No, and I so, wanted to ask that. That was one of my specific questions is yeah. what, as the director of real property, is the number that you wish to put forward? And that's the 30,000. I would like it higher. However, this is what everybody's kind of discussed. Um, okay. I just feel that if, I mean, like I said, the last time we were doing it at the maximum, so we didn't have to keep coming back two, three times every couple of years to do this and not panicking to have residents be like, I think I'm going to lose the exemption. However, with some concerns, this is. And you've had the assessors, that. they've reached out to you specifically <laughs> with their concerns. They, no, they didn't reach out with their concerns. They reached out with their concerns for me to increase the income. But then when I did do that, they didn't reach out to me. They reached out to all of you guys instead. And were, they were very concerned about where it was at. So, okay. But, but technically speaking, I mean, the, the legislation is, was, um, it's a local law. So it's, it, is brought forth by sponsors of the legislature. So, you know, while it's Kim's recommendation, it's 30,000, it's, it's, it's up to all of you, what you think is the appropriate amount. Yeah. So no, it's not. just to put something forth for discussion. And then, um, you know, if there's other information we can provide. I always use the, the parameter that I build houses. I, uh, I depend on the professional and the person mm -hmm. that's in the position to mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I obviously have other things that I have come to learn through my years of service in public office. But uh, so with that, I can help and make good decisions. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we did, with Kitty's help, um, the state had... Oh, like a report. So you could pull off all of the residents that were going to be 65 who made 58,400 as their income. You can't or change or less. You can't change the income amount to know how those numbers are going to change, which I would have liked because we can't use the 58,400. But in using those numbers, the spreadsheet that 
Kitty has provided shows you kind of what the impact would have been if we could have kept it at the 58.4. Dropping it to the 30, I can't tell you that. I don't know how many residents will be making 30,000 or less according to the state, so we can't really ballpark a figure for you on that. Um, yeah, so the best we could do is provide you information as to, you know, had we gone up to a threshold of 58,000, which we know we're not, we could only really go to 50,000, um, but just gives you a parameter that it would not have been more than what you see here on page two, which would be the impact based on um, down on the bottom uh, section there, the property values. Um, at 75,000, 100,000, 250, and 500,000, what the increase to the property tax bill for the non exempt taxpayers would be. Um, so that's the, the maximum end. So anything less than the 58 is going to result in a number lower than what you see here. So someone owning a property in that valued $100,000, they would have paid a total of approximately $11.95 more just for the county portion, correct? Correct. correct. So the, the town portion would have been affected as well as the school. If the town elected if the, the same town elected threshold. The same. Okay. And the towns don't have to go with what the county does, and neither do the schools. They can all adopt their own maximum or the villages or cities villages mm -hmm. or cities so so the the county's individual portion would have been in this chart right? mm -hmm. and I, I just want to make another point for clarification too because sometimes it is asked so this does not impact the county's budget whatsoever it's just a matter of of that total property tax levy who's paying correct. what portion of the levy it does it, not it's redistributed correct it's mm -hmm. redistributed yeah. so it doesn't change the county's budget doesn't have an impact on the county's budget yeah it's just the individuals that are not claiming the the, the individuals that aren't receiving the benefit are correct. making up the are, difference aren't entitled to correct it. yeah yeah okay am i just in the way i can ask questions or you want to leave? Um, you, yes, please ask questions. Okay. Ask questions. Okay. Yep. So earlier I had um, proposed and I had uh, uh, an increase to 35,000 just because I think that that actually does. It's interesting uh, when you say that um, individuals 60 and older, so this, this actually only includes 65 and older, are making an average. This is a household, household average of or median of 29,000, mm -hmm. which I think really gives you an indication of <clears throat> where the income levels of uh, some of our seniors. Um, and I think that um, what I thought was uh, good last month, I think part of what happened last month is, and. Um, Terry says I didn't call him, which is true. But I talked to a number of legislators. That's okay. <laughs> I talked to a number of legislators who, who really want, liked, you know, thought this would be good recognition and acknowledgement of the difficult, the financial difficulties that seniors, um, I think, sixty-five and older, are experiencing. Uh, and as we, as you know, I talked about earlier, I think that. What is happening is once you get to be 65 and older, there's so many things that start being added to uh, your costs. You know, one, we've seen the inflation. Secondly, uh, most seniors 65 and, uh, and older are taking, I mean, not every, obviously, but particularly people who have worked in manual labor, who have injuries or longstanding things, because, you know, Dan will tell you it's a tough line of work, you know um physically you know and otherwise excuse me <laughs> but I, I'm, I what i would like to ask is what is your sense about thirty-five thousand? if we were to go to 35 um it, are like you asking it, me uh, yeah just as i would be okay with that i think that that's fair um like i mentioned last month there's proposed legislation in the state for foreclosures 
um, allowing people who have senior exemption, um, a disabled exemption or a veteran's exemption to not be foreclosed on, if they don't reach their income and they lose that exemption, there's a possibility that we will be able to foreclose on them because they're not going to be able to pay their taxes. They're going to have to choose taxes or food. And, you know, I, I want to keep that in the back of our minds that if they lose an exemption, there's a chance they can be foreclosed on and then they're going to lose their home. But I mean, it's just proposed in the state. We don't know what's going to happen, but there's a chance that that could, that could easily happen. Okay. <clears throat> Danny. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, so go, go ahead. Do you have well, a question? Or? All I was going to say is I think my understanding is Chautauqua County has a lot of, and I know in North County in particular, there's a lot of seniors who worked for um, processing plants, steel plants, places that don't really have retirements because they went out of business or they just don't have so a lot of the the people I think that 35 would include are people who really have worked for our community long standing. So that is a good question. That's a statement. It's a comment. It's a comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um Terry. yeah Kim um since I've been in the legislature, uh, this has been increased from, I think when I first got here, it was fifteen or 16000 mm -hmm. a few years ago. Now it's twenty two. Okay. The state would raise it to, again, the sliding scale from 50 to 58, um, for our purposes, 50000 um, But it, as Kitty has pointed out, okay, the tax levy doesn't change. It's just who who pays for right. it. Okay, so if we increase it from thirty thousand to thirty five thousand, there's more people it, because we're going to have to redistribute uh, who who pays for it. But there's there will more, be less people getting the exemption because there's not going to be as many people who make that much. Possibly. Okay. And we possibly. can't figure that number out like we did with the fifty eight. Okay. Form. Possibly, but okay. My point is that we're shifting the tax burden to other people. And we do have a substantial number of people, working poor people, younger people who are just making ends meet just as the senior citizens are, okay? And, and look, I, I, I completely agree with Susan's point that um, uh, seniors are, are facing a hard time, okay? Rising food prices, rising utility prices, uh, perhaps rent prices for them, but we also have other segments of our population that are fake, facing the same economic well, constraints. I totally get that and totally understand that. Okay, but when we, okay, so we're increasing from at least the proposal is from 22,000 to 30,000. Um, I think I'm okay with the 30,000, and like you say, perhaps revisiting this in two or three years to, to see about an increase. Plus, we'd see would have a chance to see exactly how much that impacts, how many people actually take it, take advantage of this and see the, the actual fiscal impact mm -hmm. in, sure. in, in this year or next year mm -hmm. on the, the county's tax levy. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important to note that the current amount is fifty-eight thousand. Now yeah. we need that. <laughs> so it isn't twenty-two. I, I know. Last month we approved that it's fifty-eight thousand. So this yeah, month, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but then I think I think this thirty thousand um, does seem to be based on on some some figures that that um, Office for Aging or Kitty has regarding median income. In percentage of people uh, uh, under sixty-five that that meet this economic or this uh, dollar amount threshold, so I think the thirty thousand is based on based on statistics, based on something. Uh, where no. Susan, I'm not sure the thirty-five thousand is is that is that based on? So, I I think the thing is that the thirty thousand was based on the office for the aging median 
median income, income, which is, as we know, the median income, but that's 60 and below. Right. And it's also one fact. I asked um, Kitty and Kim if they would look at what what the possible you could, as Kitty said, you can't say exactly. No. no. But what if the um, the income was at a fifty eight four? What the cost to property value non exempt people would be property owners would be, and so what we're talking about is fifty eight four, and then going down to thirty which I, I guess I would venture to say is um, I think Kim was talking about, she said that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kim, that part of what was happening was that people were popping up because of cost of living increases, um, were uh, cost of living increase uh, payments of their social security, they were popping up above that $22,000. And what I think she had found was that's happened fairly quickly because of inflation and because of cost of living adjustments. And so if you set it at 30, what you're doing is saying, okay, we're protected for till th people are protected till, no? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, no. oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just shaking, shaking my head. Otherwise it wasn't to your comments. So. Okay. So it, once you hit 30, then you will pop up again above that. And I think what Kim also said was, for the most part, the people who are so, you know, that that, if you do it every year, and why she actually originally wanted to do it higher, was that no one except for the, that that popping up above the level actually automatically, uh, it puts you off of, you know, I don't know, excludes you from that exemption. So I think that's why she originally wanted a higher number. So when you talk about science, not science, math. Statistics. That, well, yeah, I mean, it's math too. All right. <laughs> so um, when you're talking about how it works, um, Kitty said she could do this to a limited point and she did some work and figuring out and Kim excuse me, Kim did some work in figuring out and they came to the conclusion that 30 would be okay. But I think I hear, and, and I don't want to put Kim into the difficult position of having to have an opinion about this because it's not really something that you want to have. A, you know, I mean, you're basically a fact-based, very fact-based, uh, you know, uh, leader. And I think, but the thing is that the 35,000 is just as uh, full, with just, it includes just as much information as the 30,000. It's not that it's any, like the 30,000 was not figured out by anything except for the median income of people 60 and above. So you've got a variable there where 60 to 65, you don't know how many people, you don't know how many people 60 to 65 are living in the you know yeah, what their median income true. so so truly there was a fair amount of work put into it into the second part and looking at 35. okay but then i i guess my question is uh and my resolution here the fifty-eight thousand four hundred is crossed out thirty thousand is is typed in so where did the, the thirty thousand come from is it, did that come from you kim or did that come from that administrative came from Bob. What's Bob that? and um, administrative services, services? <laughs> through uh, the recommendation from, of the from, of the from, committee. From, from no, we we actually had Kim, a discussion. Right? In, yes, I mean there was a discussion. Yes. they and found out the information me. about the median average income, yeah. and then I guess whoever whoever filed the legislation to renew and amend put in a place a starting point of thirty thousand, and now it's. For discussion. I mean, yep. that's the way I see it. I mean, yeah, it was based on information Kim gathered. That was information she was able to get from the office for the aging. So at this, so so the order of operations here, Terry, is 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 in sense that this particular item cannot be um, brought to the floor until the full legislation meeting because it would be to renew and amend an existing 
uh, resolution and amendment that Sparty passed. So that would to the discussion is is we are anticipating making an adjustment to it, and I guess that adjustment is up for debate. It's it's Correct. recommended that it go go to thirty, um, but it's uh, and that's what the amendment would be. Uh, so that amount is up for discussion and that's what it could be 30 it could be 25 it could be 35 it could be and it, it could, could go be, 250 one, that's we, the we, max. Don't, we don't have to bring all things we don't so. have to bring right. it to the floor at all we could leave it the way it stands no we can't right? we have so we to have to it. at least change it to 50 correct right? okay so i think uh my point is is um you know we've uh we've we certainly you know have the information as far as uh some of the details we don't know what the pure ramifications will be because it's a bit of a guess of of who's gonna uh, qualify i can who's give you gonna a little apply, bit of an example and then also we don't know who the, who the townships that are going to take put, uh, right. part we don't know the school districts that are going to take, take part we know only i guess what the county can can say and do and mm -hmm. i you know i i think uh, just in my personal uh, opinion in uh, my viewpoint, for whatever that is worth, it, I think it, supporting um, my thought of my taxes going up in support of a fellow uh, citizen of the county because of their age and their and their income level, I would be glad to help them. Uh, if they were in that need, like you use the example of the individual that is on the edge or maybe just over that margin, and now they don't qualify. And they're, I know what the cost of things are today, groceries. I know what th things cost today as far as gas. I know, you know, and, and it's difficult to make those ends meet if you're just above that margin. And so, uh, I'm willing to pay the extra, whatever it is, I suppose, to help those fellows. Now, I also uh, uh, have to weigh that balance. I am willing. Is all my neighbors willing to help kick in a little? And so that's where this number is an important decision mm -hmm. because uh, I think that, that I think overall you'll find that people are willing to, to a point, but within reason. And um, if... If the specific county, you know, I, I you know, I, I, the communities can stick together too, you know, and if someone is in that type of a need, those individual basis can be remedied other ways. It doesn't necessarily need to be on a tax uh, rebate form. So it, it's a tough challenge, and uh, I wish I knew the the numbers. It's a guess, and that's where I think a year or two of this implementation is helpful because we can at least track and monitor what the true ramifications are. You know, do we have any previous information, or is it just not really accurate enough from when we changed it from 15 to 22? You know, what were the ramifications then? Right. And it's outdated information anyway. It's, it's going to be different now. It's almost 10 years ago. Those individuals, yeah. There's like 11,718 people in Chautauqua County that make $29,999 or less. Yeah. Of those, a majority of them are already getting this exemption because mm -hmm. they make $22,000 or less. Yeah. So the change, it's hard to say because how many new residents will it be, but how many of, of the residents that are already on it, they'll at least be able to keep it. Well, how about how those, many will yeah. actually apply to? True. I mean, it has yeah. to be your primary residence. How many are 59? To, yeah, they'll and be you 60 have to be 65, year. so it's yeah. not even 60. You have to be 65 or older. I think that, at, you know, we are not making any sort of recommendation today. Mm -hmm. It's just a discussion. Yes. Um, and I th think that uh, this area will certainly need to be discussed more. Uh, and I th believe it probably will before it comes to the full legislation meeting. Does anyone else have any a specific question for these two it's, it, today as they're sitting in front of us? I, I wanted to make a comment about administrative services. Um, there was a discussion and what we decided to do, it was, you know, um, there were three of us there, um, Lisa and 
Traumatizer oh. and um, Dalton Anthony. And so we had a discussion and there was some feeling like uh, one thing that Dalton said to me was that he wanted, to, he he initially said 30,000, but then he also wanted to hear more from mm -hmm. audit and control. And so we voted and Lisa said she was fine with 30,000 or 35,000. And Travis had sort of the same opinion, but not as strongly. Um, and the, the general consensus was we would vote for it in anticipation of audit and control, looking at it more closely, not making, obviously, I mean, we didn't vote on anything, but that was the thought. We're going to, um, you guys are going to look at it. So, um, there you go. Uh, Dan, I, I think, I think all of us want to help senior citizens. Um, what we do, it's just a question to, to, to what amount? Because again, what whatever we decrease for one segment of the taxpayers has to be borne by the the other segment. Okay, so it's it's a balancing act. It's a it's a fairness issue. Um, the other other thing is um, that I I'd just like to point out. Quite often, whatever the county does, uh, some of the other municipalities look at. Uh, they don't necessarily follow what we do, but but there will be some pressure on the, the cities and the towns and the villages to, to do what, whatever the county does. So I think we have to keep that in mind with what, whatever we ultimately do decide to do. I will disagree with you on that one, Terry. Sorry. What's I don't that? think it'll pressure them because there's a lot of different towns who don't follow that we, what we follow and they're lower than us. So I don't think that'll cause any pressure. It, some will, some, some will. I mean, the okay. ones that have already, you know, in place that they're going to follow what we follow and what we have, if they feel it is, that might be, but. I well, Tim, I, I respectfully disagree with you because That's fine. with the fire exemption thing, I, I had received a number of calls for public safety uh, from townships and fire departments asking what the county was going to do. They wanted to see what we were going mm -hmm. to do before they decided to right. do whatever they were going to do. I think we'd have a similar situation with this. I'd like to come in on that. Um, I think that, you know, I, I was looking at different towns and what their incomes are. And, you know, for example, uh, I think town of Chautauqua has uh, an income of 89th average median income of 89,000. I think the town of Sherman is closer to 30. And I think that um, because there is a law that, that it's pretty reasonable, I think, for towns to say, um, we are all different from one another and what we can afford is different. And by law, we are. And I saw in the paper that Brian McAvoy was talking to Mr. Ball, having that conversation where Mr. Ball said, I think the town should follow. I think that's the town of Arkwright should follow this. And Brian said, I think that, um, you know, I'm fine with whatever the county does. I mean, that's really the county's decision, but I don't, we're not going to, well, we're not going to follow what the county does because we're not obligated. And I think, as Kim said, there's many municipalities that couldn't and don't. And and really, um, that's the impression I get. And it is legal. You have a legal argument there not to follow because you're not obligated. No, uh, Susan, I, I understand in it, it really each township, like you mentioned, uh, they're going to do it based on the number of se senior citizens they have in their their township and the impact it'll have on their tax base. But again, I think I think a lot of people look to the county to see what we're doing. Um, now, do, will they follow us? You know, some some may, some may not. But we set uh, right now we're ahead of the curve, so we're gonna we're gonna set the the precedent. And I think it is something that that townships and, and villages and, and whatever municipalities will at least look at to make their, their own decisions. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? I don't feel that the committee needs to necessarily put a number out there. I think that it will be um, discussed and we have the information that we need to and um, I think um, you know 
to we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll, discussed at the legislative meeting. Next yeah, week. we'll be dis we'll be discussing this. So thank I'm you sure. for the information yeah. and thank uh, you. the. I appreciate the, it. So, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. There's been a couple more additions under discussion items um, on the agenda. The, ne the next one I'd like to bring down is Mr. Card. He wanted to enter, uh, update us on a couple of uh, topics. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for taking me <coughs> taking me on today. Um, just a couple updates from the uh, DPF. Uh, number one. Uh, the Carts Hub uh, meeting last week, tentatively set for May 1st for construction to begin on that project. So I know it's been a long time coming, but I just wanted to give you that update. Um, the second update is, I don't know if you're aware of our shared and salt shed that uh, we lost the back half of it on January 9th with that windstorm up there. Um, and after getting quotes and after getting everything, um, the cost to redo that structure is $160,000, okay? And our plan is, and our thought is to, um, it's gonna, with, with the insurance rebate of around 52,000 that they're gonna pay for us, the deductible that we will meet, and um, with the capital money that we've already have, and for this year is $45,000 for the capital money that we already have. Um, the only cost that's gonna come, and I, I'm gonna take that out of saved salt money that we have not used salt for this year, will be about $36,000. So that'll just kind of be a transfer. I just wanted to, so we won't be asking for any funds for that structure, okay? Um, and then the other reason, any questions on that at all? Sure, Solshed? sure. Yeah. The, the, the insurance funds only covered a portion of it. Right, but yeah, it's uh, $52,618. Was that? Based was that on the the coverage or was it like a prorated uh, reward from the insurance company? Um, How did we, we come up with that they, number? They did a they looked at it and the the, to, the total cost to fix it was seventy seven thousand six hundred eighteen. That's what they were going to pay us. Okay, but they paid us fifty two thousand because twenty five thousand of that is a deductible. Okay, and it, and you said the re repairs or replacement is one eighty. Uh, replacement one, of the whole structure one sixty. 160. Okay, so the election is to just re, re replace the whole structure instead of because the Sheridan structure was on schedule for next year, but okay. with this happening, we just moved this ahead and we'll put Faulkner on to next year. Okay, and so that last bit is helpful. Mm -hmm. So we were anticipating redoing it anyway. Right. Okay. Right, and it's the whole structure, not just the cover, the whole steel structure and everything. Sure. New and salt resistant. <laughs> yeah. Need a salt resistant structure to right. cover salt, right? right. So, uh, okay. Uh, Tim, if it's in Sheridan, go mm -hmm. ahead and fix it. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Um, so that's for that. The next thing I want to, I just want to bring up in front of the committee is before I put a re resolution in or get your thoughts are, Last year during the budget process, you know, we asked for $2.3 million for new equipment <clears throat> and we were granted a million dollars. So today I'm here just asking your thoughts or your input on possibly re putting that money back in as far as this year um, for capital for, for purchases for equipment. And what I have <clears throat> is... And again, this is just replacement of what we currently have. This is nothing for extra. This is not a wish list. This is just going off our, you know, our replacement program. Um, would be to add an additional two plow trucks at a cost of about three hundred thousand dollars a piece. Um, four of the road sweepers that our current ones are two thousand and fourteens, and we've um, with all about. Unfortunately, they're all purchased around the same time, all around five thousand hours on them. Um, and then two shoulder machines that we use for, you know, fixing shoulders of the roads that those two machines, one's in 1996 and the other one's in 1999. Um, 
some of the revenue that we would receive um, from the plow trucks, we average about fifteen to thirty thousand dollars when we sell them on auctions international. When, once we do get rid of them, um, the brooms, if we were to sell those, would be estimated at around twenty thousand. And the two shoulder machines, basically, um, our thoughts were if we purchase two new ones, we would take the two old ones and make the best we could out of both of them to make one and have that so we would have a shoulder machine at each shop. And I know, I mean, I guess I'm just asking, you know, I, I, no, I, it's, it's, it's a replacement yeah. thing. Um, and, and another thought is on this equipment, the price continues to grow up, go up. But also another thought is the delivery time for this equipment. You know, we're, we're almost looking at a year and a half to two years. If we order a truck today, that's how long it takes to get here. I appreciate you coming in today and just having this open discussion and, and ask, and that's that's uh, much appreciated. Uh, as a team and unit, we work on the budget together and uh, come up with the best for the county. In your, it had have you researched one of your statements today? Is the price of these things have gone up and up and up? Has the budget line item gone up and up at the same pace? that the equipment has, or is that different? So obviously, you know, so if you take your budget for 2000 and the equipment, you know, what we're buying today, that equipment costs quite a bit, you know, has quite it gone a bit more. Up? Yeah. Has it gone up yeah. 50%? You know, has the budget item gone up in that same amount at 50%? Probably no, not. No. Right. But I, I know that we've been blessed, you know, obviously before I was here, but they've been blessed with ARPA money and they, you know, sure. you, you've been very gracious to the DPF with ARPA funding. And I, I appreciate that. That was before my time. We're just looking to move forward with what we have. And I, I guess I don't want to see the county get behind the eight ball and just continually go backwards, I guess. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Yep. No, I agree. And that's, uh, my, you know, I, you saw my comment on the bridges you know right. we're doing less bridge right. work right you could be telling us you need more money in the bridge account because you're getting behind on bridges right instead you've chosen um equipment we're getting behind on equipment next year it will be bridges so don't come back but, uh, <laughs> questions Mr. Tell chairman me. i have a comment uh, um, i think we need to bear in mind that we are three months into the 2024 mm -hmm. budget the county executive put together his tentative budget six months ago. In that tentative budget, he had a capital plan that the legislature did not modify. So the appropriation in the 2024 budget for equipment or DPF was established by the county executive and then ratified by the legislature. Um, I think that before we would consider this, we'd want to hear from the county executive as to what has changed in the last six months from his perspective. That's one point. The second point is that um, when we're dealing with inflation, and, and we are in an inflationary environment, um, items that we purchase or procure on a regular basis are subject to inflation and Costs go up, and we have to deal with that. Uh, we can't just say, "Oh, we're not going to, we're not going to buy salt this month because the price went up." We have to continue to purchase those purchases. But equipment is a different situation. Equipment is capital, and capital budgeting. You need to look at a long-term horizon. Um, and if our long-term capital planning has been deficient, um, then we need to address that. But this is not an emergency situation where we have a purchase that we need to make next month and we don't have enough money to do it. Deferring the purchase of some trucks or road sweepers would not be catastrophic. So I think this is something that we should approach carefully and get the benefit of the county executive's perspective. That's conservative Pierre speaking, sorry. No, I, and I completely I, agree because, uh, you know, we do have the capital um, committee that meets and, and goes over the each individual department and the, the, where all that mit, fits. And I'm sure that the uh, DPF has a replacement 
chart and where all that equipment is and what what it is and what that anticipation is out for 10 years mm -hmm. so um you know i think that uh, uh planning is you know <coughs> happening and um need to focus on it more maybe i don't know but uh you know peter points out the uh you know uh, all the, the the path to the the solution or not the answer. So, <coughs> well, I I like conservative peer. It, uh, um, but <coughs> Tim, in, in regards to the, well, in addition to the the comments that Peer made, um, plow trucks, road sweepers, shoulder machines. Okay, you're, you're talking about new replacements. Correct. Okay. Um, and look, this is just a question. Have you looked into possibly getting used equipment off the of state contracts, or doesn't doesn't that work? I don't know. Could we? I don't know. If there's any used equipment off a of state contract. I think everything pretty much off a of state contract is new. is new. Okay, but it, all the counties have some sort of sheet of used equipment and stuff. Um, have you have you looked at possibly getting a a shoulder machine or a road sweeper a used one from uh, from some other place another county or whatever um honestly no we haven't my thoughts on that is you don't know what you're getting you know what i'm saying or where it's coming from i mean that's a possibility okay it, it, just a thought because yep. it'd be a little bit cheaper than buying new but again it, um <clears throat> you know would would be getting somebody else's stuff that has been has been utilized mm -hmm. I mean, it's an option that we could look into. Just a thought. I appreciate conservative Pierre and Terry and Dan, hmm. but I also have realistic Dan that says <laughs> we are, you know, it's a concern because I don't feel that our replacements get, uh, funds have kept up with the inflation of our prices. And it really is sad. And I just hope, you know, you kind of hope that that will slow down, but it, this rate of time doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be and the end result is is our equipment's getting older and it's getting more expensive to replace and if there's a, a, a one-year-old machine that is significantly less to purchase it right. is an option but uh, if it's I have to think you, you'll probably find that most everybody's in our position right, right? because it's uh, really challenging to keep up with inflation in today's world so um, but uh all right you know I, I, well again i just wanted to bring you up to speed and thank you for your time and yeah okay thank you thank you <laughs> uh, we have one other item on the up for discussion if uh um jennifer i come yes. down and Yeah. At least, at least it's just one page. It is. It's just one page. <clears throat> okay. Good morning. I think it's still morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jen Swan, Budget Director for Chautauqua County. Uh, just wanted to present um, a quick little summary of um, the material variances so far to date on the 2023 budget. Um, in front of you, you have the details. Um, now at, <clears throat> excuse me, at the very top, the first line is what the amended budget projected the local share uh, fund balance use would be. And that was 5.548 million. The actual uh, to date is actually a surplus of 3.1 million for a total total overall variance of 8.27 million dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, detailing the breakdown here. Um, so, what we considered a material variance was anything over 200,000, be it favorable or unfavorable. And you have those items listed in the uh, in your notice. Some are surpluses, some are deficits. 
So, um, I don't know if there's anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So as you can see, uh, the sales tax, there was a surplus of 3.6 million. Uh, mortgage tax, there was a deficit of 228,000. Um, material vacancy savings uh, are listed as the DA's office, the public defender's office, uh, the sheriff and jail uh, budgets, and the 4010 administration. Um, those total come to a total of 1.657 million. Uh, there was a surplus in the jail inmate revenue again this year of a quarter of a million dollars. Conflict administration, uh, the revenue actually ended up at a deficit of 228,000. <clears> uh, the fly car program uh, is at a deficit of 572,000 with uh, primarily due to revenue shortfalls. Under public health, uh, you have the two departments listed um, also with surpluses, which is also good. Safety net, uh, the local share deficit is 145,000 for March. Um, in February, I will note that Safety Net uh, did do an adjustment of 162,000. So the total between what what you have in front of you and the February adjustment that was already made is $308,000. Uh, total February year-end adjustments um, that were utilizing fund balance totaled 404. I'm sorry, 434,000. And uh, those were between uh, DSS, the legislature, there were 911 reserves that were used, and then Veteran Services Agency. Okay. <laughs> Kitty Crow, Director of Finance, um, I just speak to the next two items. They were. Um, so the med Medicaid adjustment there was a release of an expense <laughs> accrual that had gone back many years, probably before Todd got here, but we had been accruing something related to an IGT expense. It's never materialized in all this time. So um, it, it was our prerogative to um, release that accrual, which was, uh, it was an accrual on the books that of money we would owe. So we just took that off because we don't see that it, it will ever be required to be paid. Um, the other item is, you may recall from during last year that um, the IDA did sell the Telecut building and we had a million dollars left on the books uh, for that bond and they actually sold it at um, close to one point, well, 1,341,000. So we actually were able to take um, a $341,000 um, surplus in this year for that. Any questions up to this point? <laughs> okay, so uh, that brings us to the other variances that are up to 200,000, um, since we considered 200,000 the breaking point between material and immaterial. Uh, those come to 831,000 and <clears throat> Down below, you have uh, your interest earning surplus of 1.78 million in 2023. Uh, the 911 again, the 911 uh, deficit because we ended up having to transfer from reserves to cover to cover some of their 911 overages this year uh, to the tune of 220 thousand at a deficit, and then we have an occupancy tax surplus of uh, 226 thousand realized in 2023. And then, so that that brings us down below, just really quickly in summary, between your sales tax and your interest earnings, you're at 5.455 million. Um, unexpected one-time items, which is what we would consider uh, that Medicaid release and the IDA bond, those total 917,000. Those material vacancy savings are again, 1.657 million. 
And then uh, the other surpluses and deficits come to 244,000 for a variance to budget of the 8.274 million. And, um, you know, just wanted to elaborate on, on that summary there. So um, the reason we kind of uh, summarized it in that way was just to kind of, um, while there was an $8.3 million variance to the budget, um, majority of that is related to the surplus sales tax, interest earnings, and one-time items. Other than that, we we did come very close to budget. You know, when I when I think plus or minus two million on a you know three hundred and however many million dollar budget we have, um, you know, I feel really good about that. Um, the next group down there below is just to to give you a sense of what we anticipate the adjustment to our general fund balances because the eight million dollars is the variance to the budget, that's not the amount that goes into the fund balance. That's the what goes into the fund balance is our expense less our revenue in that result. But uh, we have to take away the, the amounts of that that are going to the reserves. So um, the section below shows you of the $3.1 million <coughs> actual surplus of that, uh, $1.5 million will be uh, adjusted into the reserve for capital based on our our more recent um, change in policy that any actual earned interest payments will be what um, is adjusted into the fund balance. Not, and so that takes out the change in the market value. Um, then uh, also of the 1.3 million, 220,000 will go to the, will be um, adjusted to the res 911 reserve, 226,000. Um, will be adjusted back to the occupancy tax reserve. And then we did also um, the accounting treatment of the op opioid settlement funds is that um, we we budgeted for the MAT, as you re may recall in 23, the MAT expenses and some of them funding being funded by um, opioid settlements. Uh, so this, we received about 390 some thousand in settlements this year, and our expenses were 500 and something. So that that additional 188 was what was on our on our books from last year of settlement funds that we received. So that will be utilized to offset those expenses. Which it's really a change in the account. The accounting treatment of those settlement funds is a little bit different than the way we budgeted them. It doesn't change our bottom line. It just changes how we have to do some of the transactions. Um, so um, with that, I anticipate uh, roughly $1.4 million change in the general fund balance to the positive. We don't at this time anticipate any material changes to our, our results. Um, we think <laughs> we are making changes all the way up until last week after, you know, re further researching a few items, but um, our right. audit <laughs> um, is expected to start the, um, they've already done some preliminary work, but they'll be on site the first week of May. So Todd has to submit our, our odd to the state before then. So um, we're not in anticipating anything. Well, I should take that back. One thing that is still yet to be booked, which won't impact the general fund, but it does impact the enterprise funds is the um, post employment retirement benefit. Um, adjustments so that that um, the actuary is still preparing those figures for us and that won't until we get that report we can't book that final liability which does impact the enterprise funds so next month we will have the adjustments for for those and that would be really the last item mr. chairman I'd like to just put it in perspective that the um, adjustment to the unobligated general fund balance is less than half of 1% of the total budget. So that's a pretty darn good budget performance. Agreed. Agreed. So. Compliments to our budget director and our finance director. Nice job. <laughs> There's a lot of moving strings. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is probably the closest we've come in quite a while. So I, I, I don't like to see the big variances one way or another, but plus or minus a little bit is, you know, I don't know how much better we can do than that. I mean, there's always a lot of pluses and minuses throughout, but, um, yeah. and I really can't take credit. I didn't, I didn't do the 23 budget, but. Well, go go I ahead and take some credit. I appreciate the accolades. <laughs> you were involved in you were involved. the 2023. Yes. Mm -hmm. A budget is uh, each budget year presents its own challenges and uh, some form of guesswork. And uh, so to, uh, you know, enough said to, to when you are guessing with a $350 million budget and you can come in and have uh, the adjustments be this finite, it is a uh, um, accomplishment on all parties working together to do that and uh, so it is great uh, yeah, and just one question um, folks interest earnings um, <clears throat> for 2023 um, 1.7 over what we projected um, did we did we up our interest earnings projections for 2024 or did we keep them the same? The current policy is that we budget um, based on the last full year's receipt of actual interest payments. And so that's what the 2024 budget is based on, which was an increase from the year before then. Yeah. So, so you increased the kitty by 1.7? No. Or, or this, this, no? Okay. no, because this is this year's receipt. So when we are doing the 2024 budget, 2022 was the last full year that okay. we had so All it was right. based on the 2022 receipts but now sure. you know go in going into 2025 budget the the available um amount that we would dedicate for capital projects from interest earnings in 2025 would be 1.5 million dollars 1.5 based on yes because those are the actual um interest payments that we received whereas before we the 1.7 up above includes all the the net change in market value for the rest of the portfolio okay so um we always will still have to book that adjustment to market value um but the adjustment to the reserve for capital and what we budget for the next year capital budget from interest earnings will be based on the actual interest payments that we received realized earnings okay thanks yeah the the increase of the capital reserve is the fifth line up from the very very bottom terry the 1.544 million uh adjustment to capital reserve that, that's where that's okay yeah all right thanks sure. as i recall when we were working on the budget one of our budget amendments was to increase the interest earnings in 2024 from what was in the tentative budget. I think so. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. It may have been. I, I know we did for interest earnings related to the ARPA interest earnings. I don't, I don't recall if we actually changed the yeah. interest okay. for but being budgeted for capital projects. That could be what I was referring to. Okay. It, you know, I mean, it, it was unanticipated we could get Tim back in here and give him this. We weren't <laughs> going to get it anyway. I mean, <laughs> do you think we could? Has he gone? Yeah, he's. He is. See, if he oh, was still here, <laughs> if he was still here, I'd call him down. But oh, um, he's out of luck. Any other questions? I Comments? Okay. I would just say, I mean, you may look at this, you know, after today or, you know, the rest of the committee may, if they, if you, any of you do have questions on these variances, you know, just read out, reach out to Jennifer and she can give you any, you know, further explanation if, if there's any that um, are of concern. Just, just, and, yeah. Well, I was going to say really quickly too, I, I will, I'll email this spreadsheet to the whole audit and control committee because I, I know that there are a few people that were unable to be here today that way everybody's mm -hmm. kind of on the same page has these has the same information and can pose their questions do we expect any of the revenue to come in from the deficit of the fly car system just based on backlog 
or um Noel is here if you <laughs> <laughs> we did yeah, we did we did right. ask EMS we'll defer to, to, Noel. to to attend uh, uh, in anticipation of some I, questions. I did so. have that question so you should have left. If if you guys would like to come on down, come on up. <laughs> Overall, great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, Tim Carlson, County EMS. Noel got my director of emergency services. Some of it, um, yes. There's always a backlog with billing. Um, of course. Um, there's going to be some back billing going out as well, um, contractually, um, with the changes with the uh, Cost Recovery Act. Um, so there will be some increased revenue from work done prior to this year from those two avenues. Good. I know over the years it's been a challenging um, estimate to put together in sense of what we could actually receive yeah and uh, uh you know I, I i know every year we've overestimated yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. you know it's it's it's, ch it's a challenge and uh, if, if you look at the deficit side of things it even oversees over powers some of the social services ones so you know those ones are are much more harder to um guess on if you will We've had the program running for a while now, so hopefully we see that number not being one of the larger ones anymore. You know, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that um, your comments about this program are also applicable to conflict administration. Those are two relatively new programs, and both of those programs are very much subject to delays in. Uh, expenses, receipt of expenses, and delays in billing, and then delays in receipt of reimbursements. Mm -hmm. So the, the lag can be measured in many months between the time you incur the expense and when you actually get your reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So the 2024 budget for the, the fly car program, I believe, is much improved because working with the former budget director she spent a lot of time in trying to anticipate the that lag better plus the fact that now in 2024 we have implemented the uh, transport ambulance service um, which of course introduces another variable right. but um, um, that, that's going to impact the, the results as well so I think that we've made progress with both of those programs in terms of anticipating the, the lag better in our budgeting. So I would expect the 2024 budget results to be better than what we have seen in the past. Agreed. You know, when we, we really discussed that this last budget season and uh, hopefully the, the numbers are accurate, you know, yeah. Um, or, or more accurate. More accurate. Yes. More yeah. accurate. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> Anything else for us? No, no. Thank you guys for staying. Yeah, yesterday. no problem. Thanks for allowing us to be here and to talk with you today. Any other questions, comments? Any other discussion items that I'm missing? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Interest earnings for this year. Possible surplus. We don't count. Yeah, I think it's a plus of both. Yeah, but it may not be 1.7 or 1.5 or whatever.